Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm here to bring you best wishes from Commissioner Joan Makula, which many of you know. She was the longtime um, Deputy Commissioner for Child and Adolescent Services. Um, I am really lucky. Four months ago, I was able to, she's been my longest time colleague, and she, as you all know, a very great uh, visionary leader. And I got to join her team and step into her shoes, which is challenging. Um, I'm curious, every year there's always uh, people who've come here many, many years and others who are here for the first time. How many people are here for the first time? Wow, wow. You have come to the right place, as you've probably already been able to sense. Um, this is a place of community, um, of shared interest, uh, good, good humor, good people. Um, and tremendous knowledge and expertise. Um, we're so lucky to have such a vital organization uh, as the Federation in Massachusetts that holds and builds the knowledge to help you and your families um, and your kids do the best, best they can. Um, you know, I was thinking one time, Rich, um, Sometime, if anybody's interested, <clears throat> we could do a class, a, core, a, a workshop, on how did we get the service delivery system we have? Because it looks a little complicated. <laughs> and, um, and you know, part of the reason is we never get to start from scratch and build something that makes sense from what we know now. Uh, things build over time, you know, decades and in some cases centuries. And so we, we come up with some, some funny things. So um, that's why we need, you need each other, we need the Federation, we need all of our partners in, in government to sort of pull together. You know, we're given sort of authority through certain laws, we're given budgets, and we do the best we can um, to knit it together into something that works. And I know that that isn't often, is, sometimes isn't good enough, but know that people are really committed to trying to do that. We work very hard with each other to try and do that. Take advantage of our being here today, and, uh, and for I know I speak for my colleagues as well as myself. <clears throat> if you have questions, if you have concerns, if you have issues, grab us in the hallway and, uh, and talk to us about it. Um, I'm just going to say a couple things that are going on in the um, child division at DMH. First of all, we cha we've changed our name. It, instead of Child and Adolescent Services, it's now Child, Youth, and Family Services. It doesn't really, you know, we don't have a ton of new money to do a lot of family support, so it doesn't mean that. But what it is wanting to say is that we recognize children and youth thrive in the context of family. And so it's just a reminder to ourselves and everyone else that we hold that vision of children in their families. Um, we also, as with our other agencies, we're doing a lot of work on trying to do a better job of transition from um, child services to adult services. Um, in DMH, we're really looking at how we can engage young adults better and use um, it, you know, ex examples like peer mentors. So there's a lot of good activity going on in that area. <clears throat> Something I want to just note for people, and, and it's worth sharing in your networks or in your families as, as it becomes relevant, there is really groundbreaking work going on in early intervention in mental health with young adults. As most people know, serious mental illness like psychotic disorders tend to emerge in late teens and early um, adulthood. And there are, there's new science um, and new ways of working with people that are having wonderful, wonderful impacts. And it's some simple things like identifying that there are issues and working on stress reduction, taking fish oil um, that's very protective of the brain. We're really benefiting from the explosion of knowledge in brain science. So I just really, we're trying to spread the word. We have two specialized programs in the state working with young adults who may be at risk for a psychotic illness, and maybe you may be seeing something like withdrawal from friends and family, or heightened sensitivity to sights and sounds that's new. Um, so uh, so th those are just, you know, dif dif difficulty in thinking clearly or concentrating. So that's just a, a word to get out of some very new, exciting stuff. So um, you all are uh, in, the, in the right place and with the right people. And I did want to follow up on something that I said this morning, which was um, this community uh, has wisdom. This committee no community knows that life can throw you a curveball. 
and that we don't get through the challenges of life alone, but we need each other. We need each other in our, in our friendship networks and our various communities. We need each other in public service and government. Um, that's becoming, not everybody knows that, and I think you have wisdom to share with your family members, your extended networks, your faith communities, um, and your elected representatives. Um, I spent 20 years working in the Medicaid agency, and so it's in my bones. I have to say something about, about block granting Medicaid. Um, so I was listening to our vice president this morning talking about uh, the intent in changing Medicaid, the conversation that's going on in Washington, is to give states more flexibility. It's a very nice line, but it hides a very dark truth. And that is that Medicaid is one of the few parts of our service delivery system that you have a legal entitlement to receive. If Medicaid becomes block granted, that legal entitlement goes away. And like the Department of Mental Health, we can only deliver what we are appropriated to give you. In Medicaid and special ed, the government has to fund services for everybody who's eligible for those services. It's a big difference. And for those of you who know about the Children's Behavioral Health Initiative, that was a $250 million increase in services because Medicaid is a legal entitlement and because people went to court to strengthen that benefit. If, block grant is, if Medicaid is block granted, it is no longer a legal entitlement. We have a very strong congressional de delegation that is fighting for this. They still need to hear from you. They need to hear your stories. Uh, I worked in the legislature for 10 years. Don't underestimate the power of a personal story. Persuasion and policy, as it happens in legislative bodies, it is a very human process, as well as a very partisan and policy-driven process. Legislators talk to each other. They tell stories. Share your story with legislators and let them know you care about a caring community that helps people as we have challenges throughout our lives. So thank you.